I'm going to show a little more of the story that Jaron Lanier showed us on Friday. And this is related to gluing a rectangle that I made the other videos about. And the um, what he said was that when you take the half of a cube, say the front three faces of a cube, and you glue the edges together, it's going to be a surface, it's going to be a, a, the same as the projective plane in terms of the topology that I talked about when I did gluing a rectangle. And um, there's a, he's talked about a neat way to visualize that. And let's think about how many, um, well, let me bring up the, bring up the uh, tetrahedron here. So he talked about how you can put that inside a tetrahedron. So when you take the, f the front faces of a cube, you've got six edges, and you're gluing those together and in, in pairs, and so you end up with just three edges. Well, you can get that as well by taking the six edges of a tetrahedron and gluing them in pairs. What we're going to do is we're going to glue them we're going to glue, say, this front edge of the tetrahedron to the one that's opposite to it. This edge of the tetrahedron is connected to one, two, three, four other edges out of the six. It's not connected to this one. And we're going to um, do the gluing on those pairs. And then um, what we're not going to actually use the faces of the tetrahedron at all to, um, to make our surface. What we're going to do is we're going to stretch some fabric in between those glued edges. And here's the way we're going to do it. I'm going to put some strands of fabric. And here I've gotten about halfway across. And I started with strands of fabric along this edge. And then I'm just taking them and I'm taking them uh, with, and I'm using one of the ends and sliding along here and one of the ends is sliding along here. So this end is going to end up at this corner, this end is going to end up at this corner. If you look at it, that's not going to be straight. That's going to be this kind of uh, pleasantly curved surface. And in fact, we're going to investigate these surfaces a lot in this class. They're going to become quite familiar. But they shouldn't necessarily be yet. So there's one of the three faces. And so we're taking that um, one of the three front faces of a cube, which is a square, and if you look at it, okay, that's a square. I've twisted it, but it's got four sides. It's a square, and I've just kind of twisted it in this fairly pleasing way to fit it inside the tetrahedron and going between two opposite faces, or opposite edges of the tetrahedron. Now, I'm going to do that with the other faces. So here with the red, I was use, actually using four of the edges. There was only two of the edges that I wasn't using. This one up here and this one down here. Now with the green, I'm using those two and I'm actually sharing two with the red. This one is red and green and then there's another one over here that's being used both by the red and the green. So what that means is I'm going to be able to go between the red and the green uh, face if I need to. Now I'm going to start with blue that's going to be four other edges. It's going to overlap with both the red and the green. And so I'm going to be able to go back and forth between all of these. Now it's a little tricky to see how they're all intersecting. They're all intersecting in a kind of complicated way in the middle. And the claim is that those three sheets of fabric, glued in the right way, are exactly um, a kind a way to think about and visualize the projective plane in three-dimensional space. And it's a particularly symmetrical way. It's probably the maximal, maximally symmetric way, although I'm not sure about that. Um, and so let's try and do that. I'm going to show you a different picture in a minute. But let's try and Im imagine what we're doing here. Um, you can start out on the red threads and walk. Let's not worry about the crossing yet. We can walk out to the edge. Well, that's shared over here with the blue threads. And you can pop around onto that other face. Just like if you're on one face of the cube, you can cross an edge and pop around to the other face. Well, now I'm on the blue face. Now let's say I do actually go through the middle. Oh, 
Um, let me get back to where we can see the blue better. So let's say I'm on the blue, I go through the middle over to the other place where the blue is attached. And then I can pop out back onto the green. Or I could make a turn as I was going around. I could be on the blue and go over, where does the blue go? Blue goes over here, and then I could pop onto the red. It's a little hard to see with the thread model, although the thread model sort of tells you how it's created. Let me show you a different way of doing it. So here is um, a red sheet all created, and it's solid. Here's a green sheet all completely created all at once, and it's solid. And so now you can't see through them. And so it's a little harder to see the structure, but it's a little easier to see sort of where that red sheet goes. And here's the blue. And so you can see from some angles there's this beautiful symmetry. And so here's the blue. If I walk on the blue, it passes through the red there. Where does it go? It goes back in here. And so remember that the intersections in the middle are the ones we're actually supposed to ignore. That these are the ones that are unavoidable from putting in three-dimensional space. But this is something where I'm not actually allowed to pass from blue. And as I hit the red, I'm not, I'm not actually supposed to know that I could go on to the red. That would be an illegal move in this picture. So I could start on the blue, go sort of secretly through the red, but I'm not supposed to pay attention to that. Go over here, and then if I want to get onto the green face, I pop around this corner. That's a legal move. That's like an ant walking on the surface of the cube, um, transitioning from being on one face to another by going over an edge. Then the blue, I could go back. I'm sorry, being on the green here, I could go over to pop over to the red. Or I could shoot through down to here and go to this edge. I could pop onto the red on this edge. Ooh, I kind of got a weird perspective there. Yeah, it kind of gets locked in that perspective sometimes. And so it's a very funky picture, but it is actually something where there's three faces and they're connected in exactly the same way that a cube is connected, but plus the, the sort of backside connections. And so it's this weird thing called the hemi-cube. And it's a way to visualize in three dimensions at the expense of having it intersect itself. Now the trickiest thing, I didn't put it on the video because it would have taken quite a bit more time, is to try to figure out if I were an ant traveling on the surface, and if I were carrying, say, the letter R, and sliding it along the surface, maybe on the blue part, and I slid it on the surface, and I kind of went around blue to red, and then maybe to green, and then down here, and then back to blue, maybe through, through red, back to blue. If I made a circuit of the right kind around this surface, the claim is that I would come back with that letter R reversed, just like we saw with the, um, with the projective plane made out of a, a rectangle. And that's um, that's not obvious. It'd be beautiful to animate that, but I haven't had time uh, to do that, and I'm not sure if I have the energy to, to animate something like that, because that's a lot harder than drawing these pictures. Anyway, that's a good place to stop with the Hemi Cube.